How's everybody doing? My name is Eric Klein. Uh, I'm a uh, systems applications engineer at Analog Devices by day. Uh, but in my spare time, I like to tinker with recording equipment and build my own recording gear for my little home studio that I have. Um, I told Owen about this mic pre that I built, and he really loved it, you know, really wanted uh, to hear me talk about it. So I'm going to uh, talk about it. So this is basically it right here. So it's uh, basically a pile of parts that I had uh, just lying around in boxes. It's uh, six channels, four of which are your standard kind of Neve 1272. Does it, how many like recording people here? Does anybody know like Neve? It's sort of your classic British Class A mic pre. They are ubiquitous in the world of recording. There's the vintage modules can go for, I don't know, two grand for a 1272 module. The mic pre EQs are five, six, eight grand, depending on what, uh, which model it is. Um, but they're very simple. I mean, it's just you have an input transformer, a class A gain card, and your output transformer. And I had basically a bunch of these parts lying around, so I decided to put them in a box and wire them up. The other two channels are a bit more Frankenstein-ish. Uh, they're basically a mic pre compressor with uh, really just some parts lying around. It's another Neve type gain stage, but it's a class AB gain stage going into this uh, couple modules here that I got from a buddy, which is basically like a, an optical compressor based on an LA3A, if you know what that is, some people do but it's just the optical uh, automatic leveling thing. And some API output transformers. So it's really just got tons of parts. I'm not really going to talk about this too much because these things are really weird, and I'm still working out the kinks on these. But these are pretty standard 1272s. And I had some real 72s lying around. Um, so yeah, so I guess I should have probably went on to this. So. Yeah, that's talking about the, uh, the mic pre-compressor limiters, but I'm not going to be talking too much about those, but they're really cool. If you have any questions about them, I can answer them later. And these are the 1272s. So all the amplifier cards are original vintage amplifier cards. All the input transformers are the new Carnhill reissues of the same transformers in the original unit. Two of the output transformers are original and two of them are new. So uh, I was able to borrow an AP from work, um, which is great because I can't afford the $45,000 price tag of them. And Audio Precision makes it really easy to, to set up. Uh, he was talking about bench mode with the Audio Precision. This is what's called your uh, sequence mode. So you can set up a lot of measurements. I use this mode a No. I guess I'm done. OK, thank you. <laughs> All right, there we go. We're back. Um, I use sequence mode a lot at work whenever we're doing um, some testing on like eval boards and stuff. We'll set up a series of tests that we want, and we can just hit play. It'll run through it. It'll print you out a report if you care let you know if you pass or fail, and you can set limits. Uh, it's kind of the default program that comes up and what I'm most familiar with um, with these. So nice, gives you a little FFT in the corner, big meters to let you know. I gain match the two. So the top, the blue one, channel one, is the mic pre I built. The channel two is the vintage um, original version of that. So if we look at the FFT here, uh, I definitely have some power supply issues, uh, which I have to look into. I was kind of surprised to see that last night. Um, but really gives you an idea of like the harmonic content when you're looking at the FFT. It's kind of hard to see, but the blue harmonic content, the second harmonic is about here. And the third harmonic, I think, is about here. Uh, so on mine, you see a higher third harmonic content, which you'd expect from solid state. Um, on the original, 
both the second and third are pretty much about the same. Noise is a little lower, sure, okay, fine, whatever. Um, but I definitely need to look into my power supply. You can see the my 60 cycle bump right here, but it's down at minus, I think that's minus 95-ish. So that's not too bad. Are you using higher power supply for both? No. No. Uh, so I think the, f uh, maybe some bad wiring somewhere. Um, looks like mine's the one that's phases flipped, the blue one. Uh, what this is nice for, you can see on these old Class A amplifiers, there's an adjustment there for your um, symmetry, symmetry adjust. And you can see the vintage one needs to be tweaked. It's clipping on the top a lot sooner than it's clipping on the bottom, where mine's pretty well trimmed, clipping a lot more evenly. Uh, you can see THD versus output level which is really nice to see like where is it really start clipping. Uh, THC is really low. This is at what is 0.002% THD all the way up to about 20, 25. The mine shoots way up. I think this is the power supply. I think something's loading down my supply uh, a lot more. I doubt it's at 24, 24 volts. Should be a single in 24 volt supply. Whereas the original is kind of right up here up to plus 27, which is really what you'd like to see. Really beef, beefy. Frequency response, it's about what you expect. Reasonably flat. I mean, this scale here is pretty wide. This is only 5 dB, top to bottom. A uh, little low frequency bump, which is pretty typical of uh, Neve stuff. I don't know why the, the vintage one's shooting up like that, but it's, you know, above 20K. Probably needs something, needs some TLC. Then if you look at, uh, he mentioned earlier, you can do some nice things called, uh, with sweeps, you can do THD versus frequency, which is one of my favorites for looking at like really what's the audio character of the preamp. You see these different. This is at lower gain, so I probably should have mentioned it earlier, but for all these, for most of these tests, my signal generator is at minus 40 dBU. You can see it up there, and I'm getting about 40 dB of gain. There's switched gain, like mine has switched gain in like 6 dB steps with, a, with an output level control. The original one just has one um, potentiometer for the full 60 dB of gain that's available. So it's hard to kind of really get them at, at a similar level, so did the best I could. But uh, so when you're looking, this is with about 40 dB of gain um, with my signal generator level at minus 40 dB. They're both pretty flat. THD versus frequency, pretty flat. Little bump on um, on the original, which is typically what you see with the Neve, and that lower frequency, the THD rises up. When you raise the level of the sig signal generator, we're still doing 40 dB again, but we're inputting about minus 20 dBU. You start really seeing that low frequency rise in, in distortion and in the, uh, in the higher frequencies as well. And that's the sort of thing that really gives something its character, where you see, you know, a lot of measurements between different types of audio equipment. You know, everybody's 0.01% distortion. That's not hard to do. It's what makes it different is these sort of things, is where, how is the THD versus frequency, and, uh, and that sort of thing. And even some tube stuff. I mean, you'll see it, you know, 1% THD for some tube equipment. That's okay, because it's all second harmonic. So in the lab at work, this is the sort of thing I do. So we saw pictures earlier um, of the 2700, these older boxes. Um, what's really great about these is the flexibility of them. We can program every function that they do. We don't even really need to run 
the audio precision software. We can program these virtual instruments in LabVIEW that control every function and program it all in test stand. And I can just hit a button and have it run through a test. Uh, this is actually a Class D amplifier, um, a stereo Class D amplifier that I was testing. Um, this big thing right here is called a thermostream. And it comes down and you kind of seal it off as best you can. We have a new board that does it much better. And it'll control the temperature. We'll run it. We're doing a, um, run things like minus 40 degrees Celsius, uh, 20 degrees Celsius, and then plus 85 degrees Celsius. And that's, um, and then on top of that, we're testing it at different supply voltages. So it'll typically run its nominal voltage, um, and then its max voltage and its min voltage, and maybe a few in between. And then under that, we've diff run different impedances that it's driving. You see up top, there's this box I made, which is a, uh, which controllable from LabVIEW that switches different impedances. And then you see the switching filter he talked about that he built there. That's the audio precision version that is pretty expensive. I can vouch for that. I bought nine of them at one point and had to give my boss that bill. He wasn't happy. Um, so and here's just a little, you know, LabVIEW makes it really easy to program stuff. I'm not a code guy. I'm a hardware guy. So when you give me computer code that looks like drawing schematics, it makes me very, very happy. Um, and this is basically a script that will measure the THD of something and spit out the answer, and you can throw it in an Excel file. And that's the sort of thing I do with an AP. So. Sure.